Open your Bibles, please, to Revelations chapter 3. Before we get there, I have a couple, couple of things I want to say. And this is from our YouTube man, Guy. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, as you know, most of you. But I'm going to bring a couple other things in. At Roberta Morrison or Roberta Morrison 2, that's the backup channel, which we've had forever. Living in His Presence Church is now on Rumble. And Living in His Presence Church is now on BitChute. And also we can be found at livinginhispresence.org website. So Living in His Presence Church, they tried to take that name away from me. And yeah. they still are, but I'm fighting for it right now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's a long story, but it's China. <laughs> uh, I said, well, we'll be fine unless you come to America. And they never responded after that. It's like, oh. Okay. <sighs> yeah, we've had some warfare. But we keep standing, okay? And I'm going to start off with a joke. This is an old joke. Some of you guys might remember this one. A young preacher was visiting an elderly old man. Along with the coffee was a bowl of peanuts. And the minister started to eat them until they were all gone. Realizing he ate them all, he apologized for eating the bowl of peanuts. The elder man said, don't apologize. I can't eat them anyway, as I've lost all my teeth. I just suck all the chocolate off of them. <laughs> <laughs> so the moral of that story is watch out what you eat. Isn't that the truth of what's the war on food, what we're going through here? I want to just share parts of this letter. It's really long, so I'm only going to hit the highlights of it. But it really touched me because you never know who you're touching. And you never know, even sometimes when you're going through a hard time, uh, other people get things out of the message. This is a message that this man listened to. He said, I hope this, gets, this letter finds its way into your hands. He said, my life was changed. I had a profound impact you had on my life from one single sermon you preached on TV. Remember that, back in the day, we were on TV and radio every day, just over 20 years ago. The date of, the, of my journal entry was October 2003. And he said, you were teaching on three forms of control. <laughs> Wonder why. Domination, I'll make you do it my way. Intimidation, I'll scare you into doing it my way. And manipulation, I'll trick you into doing it my way. These are the notes from his journal, Domination, Intimidation, and Manipulation. I remember that message because it was also on fog, uh, fear, obligation, and guilt. Wow. How the enemy controls us through fear, obligation, and guilt. And you said all three forms minister through the fear of loss. He said this changed my life and the reason why, he said, because I was raised by a controlling father who used fear to control my life and train me in the ways of slavery. Fear had programmed me to be a slave by robbing me of my identity, my purpose, and my destiny. Fear taught me survival skills of man-pleasing and perfectionism to help me avoid the painful and harmful control tactic of rejection, self-protection. Wow. Yeah. That all three forms of control leverage when fear is wanting to get its way. Fear, however, is a master in deception, and while it teaches you survival skills, it is in reality teaching you destructive skills. Fear breaks trust, and love builds trust. Fear and love are forces that are opposed to one another and will take you in completely opposite directions, and you land in a completely different destination. The scripture says love does no harm. What does it mean when we say we love each other, but we keep growing apart or lying or hiding from each other? Honesty, and he's, there's a whole lot more, but I'm almost done. Honesty will bring us back to reality and give us a place to rebuilding what fear has torn down. And the long story of the short is he, because of that, and he got delivered from that fear of, and the control, he started a ministry, marriage and family ministry, wow. and a correct understanding of the Father's love to heal what fear has broken. So that blessed me. I was like, wow, you just never know. 20 some years ago, uh, how <laughs> messages change, change people. Now in Revelations chapter one, 
we're going to talk about some things about the Church of Sardis because one of the failures that Sardis did is they did not watch. And this is a day where people are tired. They're tired of the media. They're tired of one attack after another. And they're, they're just worn out. People are battle fatigued. They're tired. They're worn out. Things are going on health-wise. Uh, insecurity of what the future is going to hold and what's going to happen here. And there's just a lot of things that are going on. And I, I have to say a lot of it is fear porn. I believe the enemy loves to control you, like that letter said, through fear. Because if we're afraid and we live in a constant state of fear, we live in stress. And stress releases that cortisol, and it's really bad for our bodies. And the enemy wants to constantly put us in a state of fear. And the Bible says, fear not. So it's, we got to keep that relationship with the Lord, not to fear. Let his peace rule us, even in the midst of storms. But here, one of the warnings of this church is they did not watch. Let's look here. Revelations 3.1. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, you know, we, he wrote to the churches here, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name. <laughs> and this is the first thing, uh, reputation amongst men. When the church Christianity becomes popular, when the mega churches are so popular, they have a name. Oh, they're on television. They have 30,000 members. This must be the right church. Not necessarily. Uh, one thing I was going to add at the end, but I just say it now. One of the churches in uh, North Carolina, mega church, some of you will know. I've got people that go there, unfortunately. But the digital creator said, I'm not going to say the word Calvary. I'm not going to say the word resurrection, blood of Jesus or anything that makes anyone feel like an outsider. These are churches that are leading people down the wrong path. And so they have a great name. They have a great reputation. He said, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou, hast, that thou livest, but art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Well, here's some things that we have to watch for. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard. Hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. This is the thing. We don't fear the enemy. We fear the Lord. And it's a healthy reverence, respect for we pick a side and we've chosen the enemy is defeated, but he's still alive. He's still doing things. But we know what the end is. And there is a season God's going to allow this to happen. But also in the midst of what the enemy is doing, God is exposing him. He's showing us because we're watching and we're looking and we see. We have eyes to see and ears to hear so that we won't fall for his devices because we're supposed to be sober. We're supposed to be watchful. And if we're not watchful, we're going to fall asleep. And this is what happened to this church right here. You didn't watch. He said, I'm going to come on thee as a thief. Verse 4, thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. So even in the midst of these dead churches, even in the midst of infiltration, all this going on, there always is a remnant of people. And aren't you glad God knows who they are? God knows who you are, and he holds on to us. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So here the church of Sardis, they're walking around like they're living, but they're really dead. The church of the zombies. It was filled with activity. You could say it was filled with programs, a program for this and a program for that, and so, so much activity. But it was a sleeping church. It was carnal. What does carnal mean? Fleshly ruled by feelings. Lust of materialism, and that's what they did. They brought in materialism to get our eyes all on the things of the world 
having the nicest car, having a nice house, having to dress, having the certain purses, having to just be, you know, this and that and the other, to get our eyes off really the things of the world and what's really going on in the world. We're all in our little church bubbles, fleshly ruled by feelings, lust of materialism, worldly appetites and passions. Out of fellowship with the Lord, following the cult of personalities. What slipped in is that we started thinking these men had the answers, or these women had the answers. They were on TV, they had big ministries, they had big conventions. So what happened? We started following them. Rather than reading our own Bibles, we started reading their books and started twist, they, they're, they're scripture twisters. So here's the history of this Sardis. It was considered an unconquerable fortress or they couldn't be defeated because Sardis was surrounded by steep cliffs so no guards were placed over the steep cliffs. So they thought they were safe. And this is the thing, when we have false security. We developed a false security in these false movements thinking, oh, the devil's under our feet. We can have what we say. We're, you know, we're this and we're that and all this other stuff. And we didn't realize he was slipping in. He was slipping in. So many people backslid through those movements because things did not work the way they were told that we were, they were supposed to. The formulas didn't work. So they didn't place these guards over these steep cliffs. And so the Persian soldiers climbed the cliffs at night. The enemy loves to work at night. And he went through the town. He went he through the cliffs and he, then he went through the town and he opened the gates to let the Persian army in. So Sardis fell because of their failure to watch. They stopped watching. And the failure with a lot of us today is that we're not watching. We're not listening to the watchman because we want to shoot the messenger. We don't like what he has, he has to say. So they became overconfident and proud. And then as a result, the enemy came in. So what does he say here? Repent and watch. To repent means... Return to our first love. Remember when you first accepted the Lord, there's not much else that mattered. You just wanted to find other Christians. You wanted to find people or you wanted to share. I wrote letters to everyone in my family. Trying to, uh, yeah, that's quite a story. But you're just so you just so want everyone to know what you know and turn from evil. And then he said evil. And then it says to be an overcomer. Now, what is it overcomer? One who hates what God hates. We hate what God hates tests and tries the false teachers. We're told not to touch them. No, you are. You're supposed to test them, try them. What are they saying? An overcomer is one who receives chastisement. Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. If you're not getting corrected, God doesn't love you because he'll chastise us. We receive chastisement, rebukes, and correction. We have to stay teachable. We have to get purified, right? Sanctification, walking out our salvation. And that's an overcomer, one who doesn't faint under pressure. Trials come, <laughs> temptations come, all this stuff happens, but we don't faint. You might faint one day, but get back up again, right? Because, oh, it's just like I can't believe. Sometimes days of warfare, there's evil days. Mm -hmm. We face yeah. evil days, but then we get back up again. And then I added too, we're not cowards. We have to be whistleblowers in this time. We have to tell the truth. And there's a price to pay for whistleblowers because people don't like whistleblowers. People don't like people that tell truth. But the best ones are the ones that have come out of things and they tell you what's really going on. And why do they do that? Because they're blood. You have to tell the truth. You don't want people's blood on your hands. And that, we're going to share that scripture in a minute. But because of the mountains and the cliffs, they thought they were safe. They didn't watch, and they got too comfortable. We got too comfortable with our so-called prophets and apostles and our mysticism and our, visit, our, our great lights and our uh, smoke machines and <laughs> coming to church, and it was just like, wow, we were at a rock concert. Wow, we, you know, the world has nothing on us. The churches today have removed their altars and replaced them with a performing stage. And I remember when they took... The, ch the altar out of the church that I actually started, helped start, and no, I was never asked, consulted about anything. Uh, but when they put in that stage and took out the altar, I just wept. I just thought, this, 
now it's a stage, now it's a show, now it's a performance. Altars were yeah. good because they alter you. You get there in the, you know, you repent and you, you have people pray for you and you, right. you, you come around each other that are going through things and, and it alters you, it changes you. So now they don't have altars, now they have entertainment centers and they have uh, all these other things. The, the spirit of the world has come into the church. And now we have just fleshly nonsense. Yeah, for real. The worship leaders are half naked. Yeah. Some, you guys went to a church, it was just like, seriously? This is how they dress now? Fleshly nonsense. And that is a distraction. I, I used to lead worship for 17 years, and I always would shut my eyes and raise my hand. People, Why do you shut your eyes? Because I don't want to look at you. I'm worshiping God. Exactly. And I want to lead you into the Lord. I don't want you. I'm not there to entertain you. I never felt like I had an entertaining voice. I'm a worshiper, and I love other worshipers that worship the Lord. So now we have pep talks and motivational stories. And the Bible says we're not supposed to preach ourselves. You can give your testimony, but you don't just sit there and brag and talk about your jets and about your mansions and about how many people you have. You know, it's really easy if you want to pay and boost stuff up and uh, you can get, there's a certain way to market yourself in this world. And I refuse to do any, we refuse to do any of that. It's like, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not putting those commercials on. They might tag one on in the beginning, but that's why they, they keep you at a low level because they want, they want to make money off of you. And that's the spirit of the world. But I just say, Lord, whoever you want to hear us, they'll find us somehow. You know, you're in charge. Sardis fell because they didn't watch. The church was activity, full of activity and programs, but they had a name, they had a reputation of what men thought, but it doesn't really matter what men think. What does God think? What does God think? So what are we supposed to be watching for? First Peter 5, 8, be sober and vigilant or watchful. Why we have an enemy seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. He's been a murderer and a liar from the beginning. And those that yield to him are doing the same thing today. Watch for false teachings. Matthew 7, 15, wolves dressed up like sheep. <laughs> I don't even know if you can call them what they look like today. I don't know what they are. Go back and listen or watch Guarded Heart with uh, the Hunger Games. We watched that the other couple weeks ago. We're living in the Hunger Games. And what they did to those people and how they manufactured the weather and how they did certain... There's some things you can learn by watching their pre-programming things. And there were a lot of things going on. People told me years ago, watch that show. And I was like, no, I don't want it. I'd start it. I don't like that kind of stuff. This time I suffered all the way through it. And the people looked so weird. It was just like, they're looking like they're looking today. It was just like <sighs> their hair and their clothes and how weird they look and all this stuff. There's just, it's amazing. Anyway, so we're to, be, <laughs> we're to be watchful, keep ourselves from temptations and sin. Stay away from people that lead you into temptation. There's a time you, you love people, but if they're pulling you in the wrong way, it's time to say, love you, but you know what? You're toxic to me right now. You don't have to say that, but disconnect. Yeah. Sin starts out small, and then we get hardened hearts. And if we continue in that sin, in that God warns, we get hardened hearts. We sear our conscience in 1 Timothy 4.1. We sear our conscience as with a hot iron. We can lie without shame. We can curse like a sailor. It takes practice to sin. And so you have to kind of do it and then make an excuse for it. Uh, I could go on and on, but we make excuses for our mess, but not for other people's. So we're supposed to repent. So an example of sin is like leprosy is named so many different times in the Bible. Back then there was no cure for it, but now there, there is actually. But leprosy is a symbol of impurity and sin. And so this is what the enemy doesn't want. He doesn't want us to preach about this because he wants everyone comfortable. We don't want anyone to be offended. We want everyone to feel welcome. Well, the Holy Spirit convicts. We should be convicted. If we've lost that conviction, we're in trouble. That conviction is good for us. It causes us to turn around. So leprosy, leprosy patients, they lose their feelings. 
It's a long-term infection caused by bacteria that damages the nerves. It starts off like a small spot and it spreads. It destroys nerve endings so the, vict uh, the victims cannot feel any pain. Sometimes their limbs would just fall off. And the doctors would say, if there's one gift I would give these lepers, it's the gift of feeling pain. Because they couldn't feel pain, if you don't feel that, then you're in trouble. If you have no longer a conscience that gets convicted, you're, you're in trouble. We're in trouble. We need the Holy Spirit in our life. He doesn't condemn you. There's no condemnation, but he does convict you. He's a convictor so that he gets you on the right path, and he wants us to lead and follow the Lord. So it is with sin. We get hardened. So we need to watch. In the natural, when storms go off, sirens go off, we get warnings now on our phone, but we need to watch. When storms are coming, we need to know, okay, is this more fear porn? Is this something we can't control anyway? We just got to trust God. Is there something we need to prepare for? Is there another alternative? Is there something else I can take other than we're doing a lot of natural healing stuff that we're learning about because we know some of these things just get you addicted to things and they don't really bring any help and healing. Some of the old things God brought and our old grandmas, <laughs> the stuff that they used to, my, my grandma would, would say if arthritis was coming, she'd go in a raspberry patch and drink a whole cup of raspberry juice and she said, I'd race that thing right out of my body. The old timers, they just knew how to use food as a medicine. But anyway, Ezekiel 33, 6. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, the people be not warned. If the sword comes and take away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. That's, that's a heavy message right there. Well, I'm telling people and they don't listen. Their blood is not required of you. All we can do is do what we're supposed to do. Amen. We warn them and we warn them for the Lord. And if they don't listen, God's not going to require their blood. So there's an element we have to tell the truth still. Even if we know, oh, this isn't going to be received. This message isn't going to go over too good. Jesus had a lot of that. He said the sower sows the word. Some received it, some didn't. Some hit stony, different kinds of grounds, right? We can't be worried about the results. We just do what we're supposed to do. We plant the seeds. So here's a warning, the bubblegum gospel, entertainment. Now everyone, and I love social time. I do, I love having, I don't even like that word social now, but I, I, having fellowship, I'm a people person. I, I need people, but then I need to be alone. I'm kind of one of those, I like to do both. But now the churches, it's entertainment, coffee, tea, and me. No one's offended. It's a big party. Uh, I, I used to go to these conventions and they actually talk about party time. It's party time! And everyone's laughing. Everyone's just laying on the floor laughing. I look back now and I go, those experiences were real experiences, but those experiences now I can say were not from God. Mm -hmm. They were experiences from another spirit to keep you what? Not focused on what was going on. More, more people that were in these movements, they're still in them. They're either in them or they're so offended they won't have anything to do with, it's hard to reach them because they're hurting. They're hurting so bad, they don't know how to pray now, they don't know what, to, what is true. I, I trusted these leaders and these narcissistic pastors and I'm so confused. Keep going, every day just put your foot in front of the other, <clears throat> keep right. studying to show yourself approved and you'll get to the other side. It takes time. But sin is kept secret in churches. You don't want to preach on sin because then who needs a savior? If there's no sin that's bad and you accept everything and everyone and every, then you really don't need a savior. That's the message. That's the real message. This is an anti-Christ mm -hmm. movement. Uh, this is kind of a, a joke to liven things up a little, but this is a, a, a true story about a guy he was a young preacher and he began his ministry in a new church. And his first sermon was on the dangers of drinking. After the service, a deacon said, a third of your people raise barley and distill alcohol, so I'd be careful if I were you. 
Next Sunday, he preached on the dangers of smoking. The same deacon said, a third of our members grow tobacco, so you'd better be careful. The third Sunday, he preached on the dangers of gambling. Same deacon, a third of our people raise thoroughbred horses. You need to be more sensitive. The fourth sermon was on the dangers of deep sea diving in international waters. He got the hint. He got the message loud and clear. In the fifth Sunday, he quit. <laughs> you can't please people. Exactly. You can't please people. And then lastly, I want to share 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. Watch and be sober. Be on the lookout. What for? We're living in some very strange times. More is happening in the last couple of years than this happened for 20 years. I mean, this, things are really moving forward. Prepare for what's coming in the danger of deception. That's the main thing. If you are not deceived, it, it's just so refreshing when you can see something on TV and you know what it is because you've studied. You go, okay, I see what they're doing. I see this. Okay, this, is, this, and, uh, this hit that. Oh, uh, okay, I know what's going on because I know what the agendas are. I've studied those with you guys. I was like, oh yeah, they're uh, coming after the chickens now. Yeah. I, I read this years ago because the chicken uh, gets the bird flu to the cow and now the cow's giving it to people. So now you're going to have to register your chickens uh, and have biometrics because we have to watch what your chickens are doing at all times. They might go to grandma's house and we've got to make sure that we're watching them, you know. For your safety. This is all for your safety. No, it's all about control. And it's all about the agendas that they're, they're p trying to push forward. Are they all going to get it right now? No, but they're prepping things. They're dropping it here and dropping it there, and different things are happening. So in the world and in the church, we've got to watch for deception, not just in the world, but also in the church. Why the church? You think that's your safe place. That's the city of Sardis. That's my security blanket. That's the target. The enemy wants the remnant. He wants to war with the saints. Mm -hmm. And there's been a book that's been out, and I've shared this before, but I think it's worth repeating. The Sun TZU, The Art of War, in the book, The Rules of War. And just see, is this happening? Watch. Cut off supply chains. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. Barges just running into bridges and destroying. In, in, kind of. <laughs> Cut off supply chains. Hit the fuel lines. Disarm the citizens. In Australia, you know exactly what I'm talking about. My friends over there love you so much. They've already done that. Mm -hmm. And the order, the new order, is to do this to every country. So it's just a matter of right. different things happening at different countries. Affect this, they've been doing this re rinse and repeat for nations for years. This is not a new uh, strategy. Affect transportation. Uh, now it's, a f it's kind of scary to get on an airplane because, you know, a wheel might fall off or a side panel might come off or the last one, an explosion of the bathroom. And there was right. all the way yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> Affect transportation. Yeah. Silence important communications. I have a hard time. I can't send you guys any emails. Yeah. I don't even, it doesn't even go to junk mail now. Why is that? Uh, somebody's messing with my stuff. Has for a long time. Silence, communications like things you can't say. They want to silence us, right? It's an information war. Create diseases. Oh, that's not happened. Oh, problem, reaction, solution. Create the disease, get the fear, and then, you know, you bring in the new little... Um, Seven cause, this is, this is the art of war. Cause strife and divisions. Oh, now you can report on your neighbor. They did this oh, mm -hmm. back in the day. It's coming back again. Strife and division. Oh, I, I believe in this. I don't. So we're, at, instead of seeing who's behind all this, stop fighting each other. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. They want to divide and conquer. Insert lies and confusion and propaganda. What is propaganda? They only tell you one side of the story. So they herd people into different things. And they have been controlling media outlets. 
If you know anything, do want to do some study. BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street, mm -hmm. they own almost everything. Yeah. Uh, they create the problem, reaction, then bring in a solution, and then they look like the savior. But we're on to them. And lastly, Karl Marx, who wrote the Communist Manifesto, was an atheist and a humanist. And the things, just see if this is John 10.10, 10, the enemies come to steal, kill, and destroy. A heavy income tax. Have you noticed taxes are on everything? He went to the store the other day, there were six taxes on there. This county tax, this, this, I mean. Capture one or more political parties. Do you think they're there yet? Oh no, they're not there yet. Interesting. Infiltrate the press. Do you think they're there yet? Gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. Infiltrate the churches and put in social religion. Discredit the Bible. Discredit the American Constitution, calling it old-fashioned and out of step with modern needs. Have we heard any of this? There's more. Discredit the family. Emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents. This is all Marxism. Mm -hmm. You're wondering, parents, what's going on? Why your kids are acting so strange and they want nothing to do with you. I've heard in the last couple years more people that their parents are seen as an enemy. Because if you're going to these therapists, a lot of them will say, mm -hmm. you need to get away from those Christian parents. Your problem is Christianity. So you need to know who you're listening to. And if you're sending anyone to those, you need to know what they believe. You need to know what kind of counseling they're giving you. Why is that? Because we're watchers. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be like Sardis that we're falling asleep and say, oh, we're safe and we're protected. We're watching. Mm -hmm. And if we're not watching, we need, if we're not watching, we need to repent. Right? right? Exactly. And every single one of us is called to watch. Mm -hmm. Well, in the Old Testament, it was just, you know, there were a few watchmen. They were on the wall and they'd call and they'd blow the trumpet and they'd say, they'd blow the trumpet and they'd say, the enemy's coming, the enemy's coming, coming and the people felt safe. Well, we have this false security because we thought our preachers would tell us truth. We thought, oh good, I've, you know, if there's anything going on we need to know, True. they don't talk about nothing. Yeah. All they talk about is you, yeah. how great you are, how you are this and you are that, and these great motivational speakers that leave you so pumped up. <laughs> but they don't talk about Jesus, they don't talk about the cross, they don't talk about repentance, they don't get you to change your life. That's half the fun of being a Christian, is letting the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. And we want to be changed. Yeah. No one likes to change, but we have to. Yeah. We have to change because we're following the Lord. Yeah. And we have to follow Him wherever He leads. And part of His leading is that we need to speak up. We need to tell the truth, what's going on in the world. So many people that, I've, that I get emails from, we didn't even know about the World Economic Forum. We didn't know about the WHO, the World Health Organization. Well, we're going to learn about it because they have these treaties now and they want to turn everything over to them for the next uh, thing that they want to bring and say, well, why are you scaring us? This shouldn't scare you. It should prepare you Amen. because this world is not our home. Amen. But in it, God gives us peace. He'll lead us. He'll guide us like I taught last week. He'll protect us, but we have to follow him. Sometimes he might say, don't go there. Don't do this. Don't go that place. He's protecting you. Sometimes you're rejected from a group and you're like, why did I get rejected? He was protecting you. He wanted to take you to take another path, right? Sometimes we just see all correction as rejection. If you have a rejection problem, it's not going to be good because you won't receive any kind of correction and we all need correction. It's part of life. Right? And we can't be easily offended because if you're offended, you're not going to grow. You'll just stay stunted emotionally like a toddler. So, Father, we thank you. Sometimes we need hard truths because we want to stay on the wall. We want to be watchmen, not fear porn, but facts. We want to know what you want us to know and what you want us to say. And we thank you, Father, that those that are discouraged, I pray you'd encourage them. Lord, we ask for encouragement. Some are lonely. This whole attack we've been through the last is isolated people. They're, they're so lonely. Lord, I just pray that you'd send someone into their life 
Just like you sent Elizabeth to Mary and Mary to Elizabeth, they had a divine connection. We don't need a lot of people, but we do need divine connections to help us. When we're down, it's good to have a friend that lifts us up. It's good for us to be able to talk to people, sort out our feelings without feeling judged, condemned. So we thank you for those people in our lives. And we pray for these wayward kids, Lord, that they think that the way they were raised was too strict or too controlling and they didn't want to, they wanted to leave church and go to the bars. We pray you'd send a laborer to them, Lord, that they'd come back, train the child in the way they should go and they shall not depart from it. So we put our children and grandchildren into your hands, Lord. We just thank you, Father, for lifting these burdens off of people, for trying to fix people, and we can't fix them, only you can. So we thank you. Today is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. We will be glad in it, in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. To watch Roberta's messages, you can see her on YouTube at Roberta Morrison. Roberta Morrison 2, the backup channel. Living in His Presence Church on Rumble. Living in His Presence Church on BitChute and at the livinginhispresence.org website where you can see all the messages and download them as free audio mp3s. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to the main web page and on the top right is a give button. Thank you and see you next time.